There are three tabs included in this periodic table, Properties, Orbitals, and Isotopes. Click on the Orbitals tab. In this case, it's already selected. Then look uh, at underneath each name of the element. You'll see integer numbers. In the case of iron, you'll see 2 and 3. That means iron can exist in either a positive 2 or a positive 3 state when it forms an ion. And that chart depends on <clears throat> who iron reacts with to form a ionic bond. Now you could use this information when you're naming ionic compounds. For example, you need to use Roman numerals whenever there's a multiple charge possibility for an ion. Iron has multiple charge possibilities. So does cobalt, so does manganese, chromium. Many of the transition metals and some of the inner transition metals have multiple charge possibilities. You don't have to memorize those that have multiple charge possibilities, but I want you to use a periodic table like this or any other periodic table that includes these charge states to help you name the compound. So when you're naming an ionic compound with manganese or iron or cobalt, you need to include the Roman numeral. If it's positive 2, you put Roman numeral 2, or positive 4, put Roman numeral 4, positive 3, etc. Now the neat thing is the main group metals down here, the, the alkali metals and the alkali earth metals are always going to be either positive 1, for example, group 1 alkali metals are always going to be positive 1, and the group 2 alkali earth metals are always going to be positive 2. That's a guarantee. And then going over here to the non-metals, you can see that um, the halogens here are negative 1 for the most part. There's some oddball conditions that come up where it could be positive and positive 5 and blah blah blah. But go with what I told you in the other video that the nonmetals are always going to be negative and the halogens are always going to be negative 1. Oxygen and sulfur are going to be negative 2. I know there's some weird things here with sulfur but just ignore it. And nitrogen is always going to be negative 3 and phosphorus is negative 3. So go with those trends. I want to add one final piece of information. That is, if you find an atom that exists in only one charge state, say scandium or calcium or potassium, it is not necessary to include a Roman numeral. Okay, unlike for chromium or iron, that's the only time you use Roman numerals is when the atom can exist in multiple charge states.